In this series of canal house tours, I've shown you the entry, the hallway and dining room, and then upstairs to the study and library, and into the salon. And that is where I left you in the previous episode. In this episode we'll be going back into the study and then upstairs to the upper landing and the main bedroom. The staircase to the upper floor landing is open to the library, so I made the staircase to match the style of the library. Here we are on the upper floor landing. In 2006, when I started working on this floor, the landing had a small winding staircase going up into the attic. Although I liked the staircase itself, it just didn't look right in the space, a bit bulky. So I removed it again, thinking I might make one of those pull-down attic stairs. Meanwhile, I placed a beautiful linen cabinet in the back of the landing. The cabinet was made and given to me by Erna Huying. And while I loved the cabinet filled with fresh linens, it felt too big for the space. I tried decorating the landing with several different pieces of furniture, paintings and even a floral wallpaper. But I was never really satisfied with how it looked. I then had a sudden flash of inspiration and decided to go for a very simple look and give the hallway four doors. Three of them actually are false doors, non-opening doors, which lend the visual harmony to the space and provide the illusion that there are rooms behind them. The door at the top of the stairs left suggests an entry to the non-existent attic stairs, eliminating the need for actual stairs. The other two false doors are there purely for aesthetic reasons. The fourth door is the only true door and leads into the bedroom. I made the space clean and bright, with white walls to reflect the light of the four wall sconces. The bright empty landing brings a nice balance to the otherwise rather cluttered canal house. I love the wonderful wooden carved Baroque banisters, which I found at Miniland in Canada. They are so typical for the 17th and early 18th century, and they are perfect for the canal house. Now, let's have a look at the bedroom, but please be quiet. Ah, there's no one here, so I don't have to be quiet. Work on this room started at the end of 2006. And just as I did in the other rooms, I started with the back wall, which I papered with a lovely red and cream toile de wallpaper from small interiors. The fireplace is another Sue Cook design. On either side of the fireplace, I made two closets. To decorate the doors I used the same wallpaper and some lovely paper and tool which came as a wrapping material on a Laura Ashley gift. The inside of the closet has a red gingham checked fabric and the inside of the doors were papered with a floral pattern. I then turned my attention to making a bed. I first sketched out a rough idea for the bed 
and then drew a paper template to get it to the correct size. The bed base and the mattress are simply a piece of MDF and some packing foam. I cut the frame for the headboard and the canopy from thin plywood and then sculpted the edges of the headboard with paper clay. I upholstered the headboard and the canopy crown with silk, which I printed with the wallpaper's toile de joue pattern. The silk bed hangings are lined with thin white cotton and carefully draped using pins and hairspray. I could have used less fabric to make it look less heavy, but I do like it as it is. Next up was the flooring. I had some leftover wooden slats from old blinds, which I used to make a Hungarian point parquet floor. I used several stains, colors and a wax finish to get the result I wanted. I made the bedroom door in the same style as the doors in the dining room and the salon. The decoration on the overdoor piece has a similar style to the decoration on the fireplace. The fireplace mirror also copies the style of the fireplace. On the left wall I made wall panelling, and above it, as I felt there was enough toile de joue already, I chose a striped fabric. The fabulous silver wall scones was made by me in a Jens Torp class. The second one was made by Jens, and you really cannot tell the difference between them. <laughs> well, okay, not really, but I'm not telling you which one I made. As you may have seen in the episode about the study and the library, I am not afraid to make big changes to the house. This time I decided the bedroom really needed an ensuite, so I cut a large hole in the back of the house and added a wooden box, which created room for the ensuite and lengthened the upper floor landing. The closet door would become the entrance to the ensuite. The small ensuite has a Del Prado toilet, a vintage sink, and I gilded and hand painted a makeup compact mirror. The soap dispensers are by Shepherd Miniatures, and the wicker basket is by Lidi Straud. Some other accessories, like the shelves, the towels, and the toilet roll and holder, were made by me. The small screen in front of the closet on the right is used for hanging things like scarves and shawls. The closet stores several pairs of wonderful shoes by Patricia Santi, a leather suitcase by José Gómez, and of course some clothes. The chair with the white linen upholstery was made by me. It is the same chair I made for the salon, but the white upholstery gives it a totally different feel. The gorgeous petit point cushions were designed and stitched for me by Rosanna Rolla as part of a swap. I made a chair frame for her and she would make a cushion for me. But she sent me three. And I think I got the better end of the deal here. The little side chair again is the same one as in the salon, with the same half upholstered back and upholstered seat, but this time in the striped fabric which I also used on the wall. And here you can see the beautifully hand caned seat and back. I have always 
always adored these real leather, silver-colored evening shoes. And for some reason they don't show very well on camera, but they're so very pretty in real life. The dresser was made from a kit, and I've always intended to make silver handles for the drawers. I'll make them someday. The dresser holds several wonderful treasures. An ivory cream jar and an ivory candlestick. A hand-blown glass bottle with bird stopper. A hand-blown glass perfume bottle. A man's electric razor. And a handmade necklace on a stand. The silver box is an antique piece. The peonies were made by me. And the sampler was also made by me. It was the first miniature embroidery I ever stitched. The butler tray on a folding stand was made by me. It holds a wonderful china set from Stokesay Ware and a silver candlestick made by me in a Jens Torp glass. I dress the bed with crisp white sheets, a duvet, a warm woolen blanket and lots of pillows. And I finish the canopy crown with some antique silver lace I found in an old sewing box. I like the way it looks with the two silver wall sconces. The bed looks so inviting. There is a bit of a theme going on in this room too. Do you see what I mean? The silver fireplace companion set was my latest find for this room. It was an incomplete set, probably from the 1970s. I made the fireplace broom myself, from silver, the bristles of a paintbrush and the handle of another incomplete set I found. I must say I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. Oh, look at the time. It's getting dark already. I think someone may want to go to bed. Let's give him some privacy.